It's just a regular morning for Amber. But instead of getting ready for school or work like most people her age, she comes here to the Nanaimo Renal Unit. She has to come to this unit uh, behind us every couple of days, so four to five days per week, every week, for three to four hours at a time for the rest of her life unless she can get a transplant. So it's, it's really like having a full-time job just staying on life support for her. So it's really challenging. I can't do what everybody else is doing. Like I can't go work or, you know, go do anything. I'm just in bed all the time or at dialysis. I'm happy for my friends and stuff, but it's kind of hard to watch everybody doing all this stuff, and like, I can't. It's, it's a little so In 2007, 19-year-old Amber was attending university, and her future was promising. But weekly visits to the doctor became routine, and within six months, Amber was receiving dialysis for kidney failure. And the future she envisioned is no longer possible. I didn't believe it. I asked the doctor, like, is that serious? Like, I, she didn't say kidney failure, she said something else. And I was like, is it serious? Like, I was, like, just not even believing it at all. Many people have no symptoms until they get down to 10 or 15 percent, which is just about where most people need to start dialysis. So it's true, you can get by on a lot lower filter rate uh, than without knowing it. Sometimes she talks about when she's going to have kids and she's, there's, I mean, there's a big possibility she may never have kids of her own. That, that's hard on me. I don't want to think of your child as being sick and getting sick. Nothing you can do about it. Can't make her better. She'll rely on other people to make her better. To live a life her mother always hoped she would have begins with Amber receiving a transplant from either a living or deceased donor. The dialysis machine only functions around 10% as a real kidney does. And as the years on life support increase, so do the risks. Their blood vessels are the only access point we have to take the blood out of the body and pump it back in. And we only have so many blood vessels, so we end up using up the sites. And eventually, all those needles going in and out causes scarring over the years. So for a young person, usually the biggest threat down the road, if they don't get a transplant, is, is what we call their vascular access. I've seen her arm. It's painful. Some days she has to skip dialysis because her arm is so swollen and sore from the needle. <laughs> from weakness in the body often comes strength from the soul. When you're throwing something, you just deal with it. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's not even that, it, it is a big deal, but you just kind of learn to just deal with it. I've been in um, the field of dialysis for many years. I think it's one of the most rewarding feels that you can possibly be in. Uh, you get to see people that are very brave and, uh, you know, just uh, overcome so many uh, things in their life that you just want to help them any way that you can. To help open opportunities for Amber and the thousands of British Columbians living with kidney disease, register online to become an organ donor at transplant.bc.ca. In Nanaimo for Shaw TV, I'm Rayanne LaPlante.